Hello, hey guys. Hello, hello. Jerry here with the Weathered Shed. If you're hanging out, come on in and join me. I know this is probably supper time for a lot of you, but I'm gonna get you guys pulled up on my iPad and kind of show you what I have planned here in the works. So say hi, say hello as you come in. Let me know where you're tuning in from. I always love to know where people are watching from. So say hello, say hello. Let me make sure I can see my comments here before I go into telling you guys what I'm up to. Say hello. Say hello, say hello. All right, I see we've got some folks on. Say hi, guys. As you come in, let me know where you're tuning in from. So I had this wood round laying in my workshop here, and I thought, wouldn't this be cute as a wood riser? Wood risers right now are super duper popular. Hey, Susan, wood risers are super popular right now um, for all kinds of things, right? It just elevates, like if you want to put a candle or a photo um, picture frame on it. Uh, all various different things. Um, you can use them in your kitchen to put things on. So they become really, really popular. So what I did here was this was painted black and I just um, hit it with a, a couple coats of Fusions uh, Raw Silk, this is called. It's a very popular um, color of white. It has a little bit of creaminess to it. Um, so just a little off white. Hey, Kimberly, how are you? And so I went ahead and, and did that on here first. <clears throat> and I'm going to, um, when I say mixed media, mixed media means you're doing a, a few different things, probably stamping, clay, doing some sort of clay. Um, it can be a multitude of different uh, mediums. And so I am gonna be decoupaging a piece of this beautiful napkin on here. I'm also going to be adding some um, Iron Orchid design uh, clay molds to um, the edge of my riser. And I'm also going to be using one of these beautiful butterflies from the Butterfly Decor Stamp. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous stamp set. All kinds of butterflies, great for spring and summer. Um, hey, thanks for joining from Topeka. Where's everybody else from? So that is what my plan is. So if you've never decoupaged with napkins before, uh, one of the main things you need to do is peel away the plies, okay? Napkins come in, in multi-ply, and typically they're, they're two or three ply, and you wanna try to get down to the very, very single layer, okay? So there's one layer, and more than likely, there's another one hiding under here, which oftentimes can be Difficult to get at, especially when you do not have, when you chew your nails like I do, <laughs> which is not a very good habit. But you know, when, you, when you're watching all these drama movies on TV, the more I do that, the more I chew. Anybody else like that? <laughs> oh, it's a terrible habit. I blame my mother. <laughs> hey, Jenny. Hello, Julie from Australia. Yeah, isn't this a beautiful napkin? It is Kingstown, Indiana in the house. So there you have it. I'm down to a single ply. And I'm not going to use this whole napkin. I'm just going to use a section of it. Um, one of the things I like to do when decoupaging is I like to have my surface color fairly close to the color of the napkin that I'm putting on, the background color because I like it to kind of meld into the wood, if that makes any sense. So I am actually just going to, I'm gonna cut away um, this, this trim we're not gonna need down here, so I'm gonna just cut that off. I'm only gonna be using um, a section of this, this floral area, and until I get the rest of my pieces laid out, I'll pick and choose that in a minute. So, isn't it a beautiful? <laughs> your nails are your jewels, not your tools. I love that. I love that, Susan. Well, for me, 
yeah, they, they're definitely not that. I used to get my nails done and everything, you guys, and uh, yeah, that that no longer happens. Just no longer happens. So I am going to just kind of cut around here this little edge. Isn't this a beautiful napkin? So here's another tip from me to you. If you have a Tuesday morning near you, they have gorgeous napkins. That's where I get most of my napkins. Tuesday morning, amazing, amazing napkins there. Um, I can usually never leave there without a pack or two of napkins <laughs> to have in my arsenal because they're just so stinking beautiful. So, yeah. So check out your, your local Tuesday morning um, because they probably have some beautiful napkins in there. Okay. So I've got a section of the napkin there. Um, and what I'm kind of doing is just going to, I'm going to kind of play around with my layout. Um, we're also going to be doing some, some clay here. So I think I'm going to sit this aside for the moment. And we're going to make um, a couple lengths of this mold right here. This is the IOD, one of the trimmings mold. I think it's trimmings two. Don't quote me on it, but I believe it is. It's called trimmings two. I actually have these in stock right now, um, but I'm going to pick that one right there because it has those round flor florals in the middle of it. And I think that that would look really lovely around the edge of my, the edge of my tiered tray. So or my, it's not a tiered tray, but a raised tray, a riser, a wood riser, or a raised tray, whatever you want to call it, right? It's usually called a couple different things. So what I'm doing right here is I'm actually putting a little bit of cornstarch in my mold. I like to do that because it helps the mold release a lot easier. And I'm also using... Iron Orchid Design Air Dry Clay. If you guys have not used this air dry clay, oh my gosh, you don't know what you're missing because there's no air dry clay on the market that I've tried that works so amazing. Hey, Amanda. Hey, Cheryl from Amherst, Ohio. How are you? Yes, Susan. Um, that place is addicting Tuesday morning. I never can get out of there without buying something. <laughs> it is... Um, it's amazing. At least the one by me is. All right. So I'm going to put this clay in here like so. It is so pliable. Um, so the moisture level is, is like absolutely perfect. And I'm just grabbing a, one of my transfer tools that I like to use for my clay too. Because if you, if you guys have any... Um, if you've ever purchased any of the IOD products from me, the decor transfers come with this applicator stick, this plastic applicator stick, and I love to use it for my clay. See how I'm just like pulling that off of there? <clears throat> if you've not used the IOD molds before, um, they're pretty amazing because they have a micro rim, which is a patented design. Um... So you can see how nice and, whoops, probably pulling a little too much up there. Um, you can see how it has that nice edge on there. I add a little more back in here. So that you can get a nice clean sweep with your clay. Okay, and I don't care if it's perfect because this is, again, going, it's kind of, I'm going for kind of a, a rustic chic look but there you have it look at how um, look at the detailing in that mold um, simply amazing and I have a little crack right there but again I don't care about that so I'm gonna make a couple pieces of this and I'm going to apply them because I want to I want to show you guys how to how easy it is to apply them to in just a second so I'll make two ropes of that And it's pretty quick. Everybody hanging in there? Keeping busy? I hope. 
<clears throat> I love seeing all of your uh, projects that were in my post from yesterday when I asked you to post a picture. Thank you so much for sharing, those of you that did. If you haven't yet, find that post and share a picture of what your, what, what your latest photo is of a DIY project that you're doing. I would love to see what you're working on. <clears throat> Somebody, and I can't remember who, so please forgive me. Um, somebody posted, a paint. they're painting their stairway, um, the actual stairs themselves, and um, giving it a whole new look with paint. And do you guys, those of you that have been following me for a while, do you guys remember when I just got sick and tired of the, <laughs> I got sick and tired of the, the carpet that was on my, our stairs, and I, tore it all off and my plan was to do something cool with them. Well, has that happened yet? No, <laughs> not yet. Oh gosh, but maybe, just maybe, one day soon here, I'll be able to get started on them. I have, um, I you know, the, my biggest challenge is honing in on one idea because I end up having too many ideas rolling around in my head. So um, that causes me issues. <laughs> All right, so there's my two pieces, and we're just going to do two um, just for the sake of time on this video, and then I will show you guys it when it's farther along. Um, probably, I'm hoping tomorrow, um, once this sits up and dries, I'll try and do work on more of it. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply this wet clay um, to the edge of my tiered tray here. So we're gonna use Tight Bond, quick and thick. I love Tight Bond. Um, tight Bond is amazing. So, um, Susan, it, what are you asking if it's paintable? The clay? Yes. Once it dries, actually I've even I've even painted on my clay when it's um, when it's wet, but it will um, air dry clay naturally cracks most of the time um, as it's drying. So just keep that in mind that you may end up with some cracks in the clay, and you can embrace that, which is what I do because I love that about it. Or you can um, go back in with some wet clay and fill in those cracks. But I always choose just to embrace them because that's just part of the beauty, in my opinion, of air dry clay. I love that look. And um, yeah, I'm usually always going for more of a rustic finish anyway. So, so I think what I'm going to do here is I'm kind of just, as you can see, I'm kind of just smoothing that edge over a little bit with my finger, okay? And again, I don't really I don't really care. I'm not going for perfection, but just kind of smooshing it in a little bit. Um, and making sure I kind of have that edge. Okay? So, won't that be beautiful? When that dries and I can put another coat of paint on it, it's gonna be gorgeous. It's gonna have those little flowers all the way around the edge. Okay, so I'm gonna do uh, another piece here. This other piece. So I have all of the Iron Orchid Design stamps, molds, and decor transfers on my shop site in case you guys didn't know, uh, at theweatheredshed.com. And those of you that do shop with me, um, thank you so much for your support of small business, especially in times like this. Uh, we truly, truly appreciate your, your love and support. And uh, yeah, and you can also be guaranteed you're going to get super fast shipping from me. <laughs> There's no waiting. You will get it. It will, it will be out the door within 24 hours, if not quicker. <laughs> I actually got an email from somebody one day and she said, holy cow, I just ordered that like an hour ago. 
and I'm already got a sh got tracking notice. I'm like, yep, that's how I roll. That is how I roll. All right, so I just married that up to the other one, the edge of it. Um, one thing that will probably happen is they will separate, and I will just fill that in. Um, the glue, this glue is amazing, and I highly recommend it. Quick and thick, tight bond. You can find this right on Amazon, Susan. You can find it right on Amazon. All right, so I've got my beautiful border starting here. Um, and like I said, I'm not gonna take up any more time on this video to show you any more of that part so you guys get the idea. You know how that's done, but won't that be pretty? Look at that. Nice little floral pattern going around the edge. Okay, and so now I am going to um, do some, a little bit of stamping on the background here. So we have this butterfly stamp from IOD. Okay, and when you take your stamp sets out of the package for the first time, if you've never used IOD stamps before, you want to um, condition them. And what I mean by that is you want to take the, the sheet off the back, just like that. You want to take the sheet off the back and you want to condition this. And what I mean by conditioning is taking a fine grit sandpaper and you want to go over your stamp. Why? Because it, it helps the prep the stamp for whatever medium you're going to be using. And like I said, you only have to do this once. And I'm sure the other reason is, you know, these stamps are, are manufactured. So there's probably... Um, Stuff on here from the manufacturing process too. It just helps make the stamp be a little more vivid and clear. And um, so that's why you want to do it. So I think I am eyeing up this big guy right here. Um, I'm hoping it's not going to be too much. Um, but he's very beautiful. So I'm thinking that's probably the one I want to use is this big guy. Isn't he pretty? Gorgeous. And there's even a bumblebee. So I'm going to show you the front side because that's, look at the detailing, you guys. Look at the detailing in these butterflies. There's even a bumblebee here. Um, this is an absolutely gorgeous stamp set. You can do um, brown paper. You could stamp with the butterflies to make wrapping paper. You could do gift bags. Um, just uh, the ideas are endless with these stamps. So I am gonna uh, just cut away, see how I'm just leaving it on the backer sheet? And I'm just gonna cut around this stamp. And I'm gonna cut him out. Just cut him out of here. I can maneuver my, there we go, maneuver my scissors around there. All right, come on, guy. There we go. Okay, so there's my stamp. Okay, and the reason I want to incorporate a butterfly is that there is a couple of butterflies in this napkin, um, specifically right here. And I thought that would kind of be really cool to kind of tie it in, all right? So, and we're gonna do a little bit of a layering on here as well. So I think, and you know what, you guys, now that I'm talking to you about this, I actually think that a tad bit of the, you guys know which, which stamp I always like to use as my backdrop. Those of you that have been, that have been following me a while, you guys know who wants to guess. What stamp is coming out? I just thought about it. My crackalier, or my, excuse me, my kindest regards. 
I have got to put this down first. So see, this is how my mind works. Sometimes you start laying things out and you're like, oh my goodness, that would be really cool with a little bit of scripted writing in the back. Um, yeah. So I think I'm going to do that. So I have my ink pad already loaded up. I'm actually using ink um, just because ease, simplification, simplification. And this is an older pad. It's been used a lot. So the, the ink may be very faded on here, but that's okay. I don't want a really vivid um, impression. I just want to get a bit of the the scripted writing on here. So I'm just going to, yeah, we're just gonna kind of tickle it like so. There we go. Lift it up and then I am going to hit that with a blow dryer. pretty dry already that was pretty darn fast okay and then we're going to take our butterfly and I'm actually going to do I'm going to do my butterfly in black because I want him to stand out a little bit more um so we're going to do him in black okay I shouldn't be doing this on top of my surface I always do that there we'll put a protective sheet on there so we're gonna do our butterfly in black. Just for the contrast. Okay. Whoops. Yeah, see I went off of my sheet too. I would have gotten that all over my surface. All right, and I am going to take him and I'm just going to, eh, let's see, I'm gonna kind of put him, I think we're gonna put him up in here on an angle and he's gonna go off a little bit on the edge. Oh yeah, that's gorgeous already. Okay, isn't that pretty you guys? Look at that. So now we've created already a layered look just by adding the, the kindest regard stamp in the background and then the butterfly on top. Isn't that pretty? It's pretty already, right? Oh, I get moving along and I didn't close up my clay. <laughs> Goodness gracious, get that clay covered up, girl. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to take our piece of napkin. Where'd you go, napkin? Blew away with my blow dryer. Okay, now we're gonna figure out what we wanna do here with the napkin. Make sure I get you guys in the, it's so hard with the camera. I never know where, where my placement is at here. I want to make sure you guys see most of this. Okay, there you go. Um, all right, so I think, oh yeah, I'm liking that. I'm going to put, I think I'm going to put, Make sure I get that bird nest in there and those birds down there. So that, I think that's about where I'm gonna want this. So I'm just gonna put a little marker on the edge here with my scissors. I'm just gonna cut, cause that's kind of where my placement's gonna be. And I'm gonna cut here. So I have two little markers and then I'm taking my Mod Podge, my good old Mod, Mod Podge and a chippy brush. 
this is how I like to do my, my Mod Podge. Everybody has their own ways of doing it, but I'm just gonna put that right on here. Like so. <clears throat> and I'm probably trying to get those smooth it out as best I can and then I'll add more Mod Podge at the top. It's best to be very light handed with the Mod Podge. You don't wanna be too, too thick with it because you don't wanna rip your napkin. Um, but I gotta see how high my design goes up here. Okay, that looks pretty darn good. And just kind of work with it. Like that. It's going to be pretty when it's done, isn't it? I like mixing stuff together. It just creates a one-of-a-kind look when you can do that. And... Again, I'm not going for perfection because I'm probably going to sand this a little bit. I might sand and distress this back a little bit. Isn't the napkin beautiful? Yeah. The napkin is definitely gorgeous. Okay. I see... See, I ripped the paper right there. That has an air bubble underneath where I didn't quite get it down. So I'm gonna try to soak through the paper. Usually I'm pretty good at this. Usually I don't get this many air bubbles. So I probably rushed it a little too much. I probably needed to use my pencil and mark where the edge goes beforehand is what I should have done. Shame on me. So you guys don't do that. Don't do what I do. Okay, now this edge along here, you wanna make sure you really get the edge down and I'm gonna show you why because this is the trick that I use to remove my, my paper. So you wanna make sure you go all along that edge there. Say hi as you guys come in if you come in late. Um, if you've never followed me before, I am Jerry from the Weathered Shed, and I'm located in Wisconsin. So thanks for tuning in. All right, so this is what I do. Where's my uh, sandpaper? This is what I do to remove the edge of the sand or the remove the sandpaper cleanly from the edge. I hit it with a piece of sandpaper like this. Okay, this is how I do it. See that? Quick and easy. Over here I've got my, my uh, clay, so I've gotta be a little bit more careful here. So I'm just gonna kinda cut this away and I'll sand it once it's a little more dry on that edge there. Just like that. Clean edge. Won't that be beautiful when it's, when it's all done? And then what I'm going to do, I'm gonna let this sit because I don't wanna mess with the napkin anymore. I'll put a little more of the, um, the Mod Podge on um, probably in the morning 
and then it will have plenty of time to set up and then do my the rest of my clay around the edge and um, isn't that pretty so simple these little these little wood rounds you guys cost like nothing at Menards um, you can pick these wood rounds up at Menards napkins are pretty inexpensive um, once you have the stamps, you can make a gazillion different things with the stamps. Uh, so you really can get a lot of projects, um, by all of the, using all of these materials and, um, really easy. And then these are my little wood, these are my little wood, um, these are actually ball knobs, they're called, so they have a flat edge. So my plan is I will just take them and I'm going to use three of them and mount them in a triangle on the back side, and that will be my little wood riser. Um, very, very simple to do. We'll just glue those on, and it will be ready to rock and roll. I'll paint this trim out on around the edge once it's dry, and it will be beautiful. Wouldn't something like this make a great Mother's Day gift? Wouldn't a mom love to receive something like this, handmade by you? I think it would be a beautiful uh, Mother's Day gift. Um, and you can do anything you want for the stamping. Um, all kinds of ideas for the stamping. You could stamp a word on there. Um, you know, you could do whatever you want. We have the typesetter, typesetting stamp set that has the capital and the small letters. Um, so endless, endless ideas um, with something like this. So... So that is it for tonight, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, again, I'll come back on and finish it up with you guys probably, I'm thinking maybe tomorrow afternoon, okay? So everybody have an awesome evening and we'll talk to you soon, okay? Bye-bye, guys.